right. Hello, everyone. Um, so today we're going to start uh, looking at how a database does what it does. And we're going to do that by uh, establishing a set of uh, ground rules. So we need some way, before we even talk about asking questions, we need some way that we can specify these questions precisely. And that's what we're going to talk about today, a language called relational algebra. So if you recall, last time, the one thing that I absolutely begged you to remember uh, the, the running theme of this class is going to be uh, the idea of taking a, a thing of some sort and finding a, uh, another thing of the same type uh, that is better, but that still in some way is equivalent. Uh, and the two things uh, at a really, really high level that we're going to be exploring is First, how can we tell if the thing is better, or the new thing is better? And second, how can we tell if the new thing is equivalent? So in this case, the thing that we're talking about is questions. Any questions? One chuckle. So before I get into it, a uh, couple of really quick definitions. Uh, just want to recap some of the stuff that I covered uh, last lecture. Uh, so first off, relational data, um, as I mentioned, uh, was a collection of uh, tuples of values, or rows of values. All of the tuples in a relation or a table have the same schema. In other words, I have the same set of attributes for each tuple or each row. Um, and uh, we can talk about the, the schema of the relation or the schema of the table uh, in the same way. I'm going to use those terms interchangeably. Uh, if I talk about a table, it's the same thing as me talking about a relation. If I talk about a tuple, it's the same thing as me talking about a row. Um, now, we can provide some constraints on this collection. And if you'll recall, I talked about three specific types of collections. Tuples, uh, excuse me, sets, bags, and lists. So bags are kind of like the, the basic, simplest uh, type of thing. Um, I, uh, a bag is just any collection, any group of tuples that I can describe uh, and enumerate. A set is what happens when you get rid of the duplicate values in a bag. Uh, so as you might notice, uh, the set over here, uh, I uh, killed two of the red shirts. And he'll get his eventually. Hands up who, who recognizes this reference. All right. Uh, you, you'll pick up more and more Star Trek as, as you go along. Um, that, that is the, the other part of what I'm teaching. Uh, the other case is where order matters. Um, uh, so in a list, we're going to, uh, a list is basically a bag where it matters what order the items are presented in. Um, now, today we're going to be focusing almost exclusively on the first two. And we're going to get to lists uh, in a couple of lectures. Uh, the other bit of definition I want to get to is, uh, oh, uh, moving on too fast. Before I move on, any questions? Um, that is uh, that is an excellent point. Yes. All right. Um, so, any other questions? All right. So the other bit is uh, what exactly is a declarative language? Uh, so a declarative language is uh, basically a way of saying um, that I'm telling you what I want rather than how I want it done. Now, I mean, there's a huge scale here. It's, it's, uh, there's a gradient from declarative to imperative. Uh, but basically, think of this, uh, how, how much do you want the language to micromanage what the computer is doing? Uh, so in languages like C, Java, Python, Ruby, you're basically telling the computer step by step every single individual um, component of, of uh, what you want uh, the system to do. Uh, 
Um, so if I want, uh, for example, uh, the system to get me the TPS reports, uh, hands up, who gets that reference? Okay, about the, that one you don't have to know. Um, so going to get uh, every, uh, if I was going to describe that declaratively, I just say get me the TPS reports and then someone possibly maybe figures out what to do and then promptly ignores it. Um, in an imperative language, uh, I'd actually have to say, okay, go to this filing cabinet, uh, go through every single uh, report in that filing cabinet, find the ones that are labeled TPS, and then um, produce those, uh, those reports. And so the reason that we want to, uh, at least in databases, the reason that we want to uh, talk about declarative rather than imperative languages, is that it makes it easier to talk about uh, what the user's goals are. Uh, with an imperative language, you have to be very precise about what you want uh, and how you want it done. With a declarative language, you have a lot more flexibility in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, equivalences and, and trying to find better ways or, or uh, more efficient ways of uh, answering the user. Uh, nice thing about declarative language as well, declarative languages as well, is that it makes the system, it allows the system to kind of sneak in certain kinds of optimizations uh, or back up. Uh, it allows this, uh, it disconnects the question from uh, the way that uh, the, the data is stored. And so uh, if my uh, TPS reports were stored in giant archive stacks, I wouldn't have to explicitly tell, uh, tell my, my poor employee to go out into the archive stacks explicitly. I'd just say, get me the TPS reports. And wherever they happen to be stored, the employee hopefully knows that, uh, where that is. OK, so any questions up to this point? OK. So we've been talking about um, queries and you know, how, how do we specify queries. Um, now, in order to actually understand what we're trying to solve, let's take a look at the bigger picture. So at a high level, what we're trying to do is uh, figure out how we, are, how we can answer queries. How do we build uh, a piece of code that answers queries? And if you'll recall, uh, from the project outline, that's essentially what you're asking, uh, what I'm asking you to do. So there's this huge black box uh, where we go from the output of JSQL parser to a query result. And let's try and, before we get into relational algebra itself, let's try and get a sense of what really goes into this box. So um, you don't need to memorize this, this code, but this is just to give you a sense of, of what's going on here. Uh, JSQL parser is going to take the SQL file and it's going to convert it into a structure of um, objects, each of which represents some part of that query. Um, so SQL has this thing called select from where, and each part of that query gets broken down into an object. The JSQL parser is going to grab the SQL file, and then for every single statement in that SQL file, you need to do something. All right, well, now what? Where, where do we go from there? Um, so recall, one of the things that I put on that, uh, that slide before was this idea of a query evaluator. So in principle, we could just take this query that we parsed. We could take this uh, you know, select from where it tells us uh, what data we want, uh, what filtering predicates we want on it, um, throw it at our data and produce a result. Uh, is this, does this seem like we're, we're done here? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, you do not want to do this. Um, SQL is really, really a pain in the butt. Um, why is it uh, so annoying? It has a huge number of corner cases. It is 
uh, designed basically to make it very easy for humans to uh, state what they want. Um, it has lots and lots of different ways of expressing the same concepts, uh, and lots and lots of different corner cases, lots of different things that, um, when you're evaluating, mean basically that you need to do a lot of, uh, you need to write a lot of duplicate code. And so, uh, what typically happens is that there's, the evaluation doesn't happen directly on the SQL, it happens on some sort of simplified representation. Some much, uh, something that's a lot easier to work with, a lot easier to understand, maybe a lot harder for, the, the, um, for a human being to write by hand, but something that's a lot easier to, uh, for a computer to, to uh, work with. So today, what we're going to focus on is basically what is happening in that uh, blue box on the screen. What exactly is that simplified representation, uh, and how do we work with it? Now, in a, uh, th there's a number of different things that could go in that box. Um, the two most common ones for relational algebra are something uh, for uh, relational uh, data um, are something called relational algebra and relational calculus. Um, algebra is a little bit simpler than calculus, um, and the nice thing about relational algebra is that it is uh, what's called an operational language. Uh, it describes it is uh, the, the the language itself pretty closely mirrors, step by step, what the uh, database needs to do to the data. Um, relational calculus, on the other hand, is a little bit easier for reasoning about um, uh, what the user wants. So for now, what we're going to do is focus on uh, relational algebra as a data representation. Okay. So. The first and pretty much main thing that you need to know about relational algebra is that every single building block of relational algebra, every single operator in relational algebra is, um, is, it, uh, is uh, applied to relation and it produces a relation as an output. So I can take a query and I can apply it to a relation called officers, a relation called ships, and a bunch of other uh, relations. And this query is going to, um, all it really cares about is the schema of the input. It doesn't actually care about how officers is defined. It doesn't care about how ships uh, is, is defined. It just cares about the schema and uh, how that relation um, is used. And the, the thing that I really, really want to uh, stress here is that the output of a query is also a relation. I can have two queries. I can feed one of the, uh, the output of one of the queries into the other one, and that's exactly, it's going to do exactly the same thing as if um, I had passed in just a, a, a raw CSV file in there. Um, any questions on uh, anything up to this point? OK, so uh, since we're working with data, I'm going to uh, provide you with a couple of uh, bits of data that are going to uh, turn up throughout the, the uh, course of today. Um, so I've got a relation called captains, a relation called first officers, and a relation called uh, locations. You don't have to memorize this. Uh, I'll bring it back up when it's necessary. But just so you have a sense of what uh, I'm going to be talking about. OK. So what is relational algebra? So in arithmetic, you have operators. You have plus, you have minus, you have division, you have uh, multiplication, um, you have uh, exponentiation, you have a set of operators that uh, take 
some data as an input, numbers, and produce the same type of data as an output, again, numbers. Relational algebra is exactly the same. You have a set of operators that take a table as an input and produce a table or a relation as output. And there are five basic operators that we're going to be talking about. Uh, selection, projection, set difference, and union. There's also a couple of other operators, intersection, join, division, and renaming. Um, but those can actually be defined in terms of the basic five. So I'm going to start off with the basic five, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a few of the others. Again, I can't harp on this enough. Every single one of these operators takes one or two relations as input and produces one, uh, one relation as output. Um, and one other thing that I just want to uh, bring up as well, um, there are several different types of relational algebra. Um, so there is set relational algebra, which takes a set of tuples as input and produces a set of tuples as output. There is bag relational algebra that, produces, that takes a bag of tuples as input and produces a bag of tuples as output. Anyone want to venture a guess on what the third one's called? Well, it's actually extended relational algebra, trick question. Um, but uh, extended relational algebra actually cares about order. So today we're going to focus mostly on the first two, set relational algebra and bag relational algebra. Now, this is someplace that trips, uh, this is something that trips up uh, a lot of people. Um, when somebody refers to relational algebra in general, they're typically referring to set relational algebra. On the other hand, SQL and pretty much the entire database community uh, works with bags. So um, most of the time when you're implementing stuff, it's going to be bag relational algebra. I'm going to try and be absolutely uh, be very pedantic about whether I uh, refer to set relational algebra or bag relational algebra. But if there's any ever any confusion, uh, I want some. If I ever say the word relational algebra without either extended set or bag, somebody raise their hand and yell at me, please. Um, but again, today we're going to focus on set relational algebra and bag relational algebra. Um, and I'm going to start off with set relational algebra because it's a little bit easier to think about. OK. Any questions up to this point? All right. So let's go through the, uh, the basic operators that uh, SQL uses, no, that relational algebra uses. Um, the first is projection. Um, so a, uh, every relation has a schema, a set of names and a set of types. And what projection does is it takes some of these uh, names and types and it deletes everything else. So if I have a relation here with a first name, a last name, a rank, and a ship, and I say project out the last name in the ship, what am I going to get? So what? Just two columns. Yep, I'm uh, going to uh, pull out the last name and the ship. All right, here's another question for you. If I project the rank column out of first officers, how many rows am I going to get? Four. Okay, so I'll get um, uh, what? What uh, four? Two point five. Two point five. Two point five. And three. Okay. Is that the only? Yeah. Two. Okay. Some disagreement here. Why? Why two? Because there's only two unique values. Okay. So this is the first case where set and bag relational algebra begin to branch off. Um, so projection has, uh, creates the, the possibility of uh, creating duplicate values. If you project away a column, 
that is, uh, is being used to distinguish, uh, excuse me, if you get rid of a column that is being used to distinguish two different rows, those two rows now become the same and they have to be uh, eliminated. So, um, string. Um, so <clears throat> the, the first the projection works slightly differently on sets and bags. Uh, when you're working with sets, you need to also uh, make sure to remove any duplicate values after you do a projection. Okay. Selection. So the second operator in relational algebra is called select. Yeah. Uh, I have a question on the slide. Yeah. No, uh, so captain is, is the name of the input. Um, one way to think about this is um, uh, projection is, is a function. So project or pi underscore last name ship is a function, takes a relation as input and produces as output another relation with schema last name and captain. So that whole table right there is, is labeled captain? Uh, no, the, the input. Oh, sorry. Um, the... Uh, relation on the right there is, is uh, no. Uh, do I have, does this thing do what I think it does? No, it doesn't. Um, ah. So typically we refer to that relation as the projection of last name and uh, of uh, last name you ship on, uh, from capital. So the, the name of that relation is that whole bit of math gibberish up on top of it. Uh, captain would be uh, would be that. Uh, two. So the question is, uh, can two tables have the same name? Um, or did I get that backwards? Can two different table, uh, can two, uh, can the same table have two different names? Was that the question? Well, my confusion was, um, because I didn't remember these same when we got to that part. Sorry, that, uh, my fault for having a confusing slide. This, this, by the way, is why everyone should be raising their hands as soon as I say something confusing. Because I will say something confusing. Yeah? Do you need to know ahead of time if your table's a set? Or, a bag, or is it declared in the nomenclature? Um, so the question is, do you need to know whether your table is a set or a bag up front? Um, so the answer, in short, is no. What you need to know is whether you are working with set relational algebra or bag relational algebra. If you're working with set relational algebra, it is assumed that all of your inputs are sets and all of your outputs are sets. Uh, if you're working with bag relational algebra, it is assumed that all of your inputs are bags and all of your outputs are bags. And when we start working with extended relational algebra, um, there is a specific distinct operator that takes your input and converts it from whatever it was into a set. Does that address your question? Yes. And uh, did I? Yeah. So you were doing set relational algebra. Um, yeah, so the, so what you will, what you see, uh, as soon as this catches up to me, so 2.5, 3.0 is set relational algebra. If I had bag relational al algebra, I'd have four rows. Okay. Um, any other questions? <coughs> yeah. Sorry. Uh, so the question is, uh, can you, ha uh, let me rephrase and see if that's uh, correct. Uh, can you have a tuple with one element in it? Yes. You can have a, um, so I'm going to use the word tuple and the word row to rep uh, represent the same thing. If I have a table with one column, everything is still a row. 
every row of that table is still a row. Is that? Okay, so selection is the second type of operation that we can perform. So you can think of projection as pulling out columns. Selection pulls out rows. Um, we're going to pick out a certain set of rows, uh, or a certain bag of rows, that satisfy some selection condition. And this is also given as a subscript on uh, the selection operator, which is sigma. Um, so, for example, if I were to select every, off, uh, every captain with a rank of less than 3.5, I'd get back a set of rows. Um, and I can, uh, as before, I can take um, a selection predicate, and because the output of every single operator is um, itself a relation, I can pass that in as input to any other operator like projection. So if I want, uh, for example, the last name of every captain with a rank greater than 3.5, I get back Kirk, Picard, and Janeway. So here's a question. Do, when does, uh, under what conditions uh, do we care about duplicate values here? So set bag relation. Okay, so if the input is uh, a bag, you get duplicate values. So basically anytime you need to go from a bag to a set, you need to uh, remove duplicate values. If the input is a set, can this introduce new duplicate values? No? Why? Because there's no duplicates to begin with. And all you're doing is removing things. So if, I, if there's no twins in the room and I remove people, I'm never going to get any twins in the room. Um, OK. So um, selection is a fairly easy one. Another uh, fairly easy one is union. So yeah. Uh, uh, when we had duplicate ranks. Um, ah, okay. Um, so what's, uh, okay, so the, the question is, uh, what's the di difference between projection and selection? Uh, that projection can introduce duplicate values. Um, So you're technically not deleting any rows, but you are deleting information. You're deleting uh, features that could potentially distinguish two rows. So if I look at this uh, table of first officers, Spock is different from uh, William. But if all I care about is their rank, and the, uh, yeah, that's my name. Yeah. you follow that? Yeah. No. So basically, selection do, neither eliminates uh, distinguishing features nor does it uh, eliminate uh, introduce new rows that could potentially be duplicate values. All right, so union. Now, union is a little bit weird uh, because it is the only relational operator that actually um, doesn't work in all cases. What do I mean by that? Uh, or it's the only basic relational operator that doesn't work in all cases. Um, every single uh, union has to be applied to two relations that have the same schema. 
Um, if the two relations don't have the same schema, it doesn't really, the union doesn't really mean anything. Uh, it's like dividing by zero. So with a union, what you're getting back is you're, you're giving the union two relations and you're getting back a list of tuples that occur in one relation or the other. Any questions? Okay. So I have a question for you. Can this introduce duplicate values? Do we do we need something to do something special for set or bag relational algebra? Yes. Yes. Maybe not in our current example, but if there was a first officer and then became captain, he would be in both tables. Okay, so if you have the same row in both tables, then even if the inputs are sets, the output might be a bag. So you need, so for union, that's another one of these operators that could potentially in introduce duplicate values. So bag, whenever you're talking about selection, you can just talk about selection. Whenever you're talking about projection, on the other hand, and union, you need to be explicit about whether you're talking about set union or bag union. Yeah? So this is are you assuming that they both have both relations at the same schema? Yes. Uh, so the union only works on union compatible relations. <laughs> uh, so, any other questions? All right. Um, all right, so intersection is um, kind of the opposite. Uh, returns all tuples that are in both of these relations. Same thing as before, you need to have the same schemas. So the two, uh, so set, uh, excuse me, intersection only works on uh, relations where, uh, that have the same schemas. Do we care about duplicates here? <coughs> no. Um, if, uh, what are my, my four cases? Uh, the tuple is in one, but not both of the relations, uh, both of the inputs. Again, they can be sets, um, in which case nothing happens. It can be in both sets, um, in which case I produce exactly one output, or it can be in no sets, in which case I still produce nothing. Um, the one case where this, is, this gets a bit weird is if you're talking about bag intersection. We're not going to uh, go into that uh, here, but um, it's an interesting thought experiment. What do you mean? by a bag intersection. So the last one is set difference. Um, so set difference is, let's take all of the elements in one of the relations, and then remove or filter out all of the uh, tuple, excuse me, all of the tuples in one relation, and then filter out all of the tuples that appear in another relation. So any question on union, intersection, or set difference? Or I should say set, yeah. Ah. Um, so the question is, is there order of operations? Um, typically, or pretty much almost always, um, you see relational algebra properly parenthesized. So there's, um, there's no formal order of operations. Um, the, the, uh, the convention is typically unary operators have the highest precedence. So projection, selection, they only have one input. So they're applied directly to whatever their input is. 
Um, and then join has the next highest precedence, and then union has the absolutely highest precedence, or sorry, the, the lowest precedence. Uh, but like I said, if um, conven uh, convention in relational algebra is to parenthesize heavily. So um, if that question comes up, make sure to ask whoever gave you the, uh, the expression, because there's no formal rules for query. Good question. Any other questions? OK. So union is one of the basic operators. Um, intersection and set difference, uh, we'll actually see that you can derive those from the others. One of the other, uh, the last of the basic operators is called cross product. Now this one behaves really strangely and um, a, a lot of uh, people get um, the the main question I get uh, with respect to cross product is why would you do this? Um, so bear with me for a few moments, but essentially what cross product does is it takes every row in one relation and it pairs every one of those rows in the first relation up with every row of the second relation. So for example, I might do a cross product of first officers and locations. Uh, so recall we had four locations, uh, where, uh, Earth, Risa, Bajor, and I have a typo there. Um, I appear to have a typo there. Um, Oh, sorry, ship location. So um, in this case, I have three different uh, location fields. Uh, Earth, uh, 1701A Earth, 1701D Risa, DS9 Bajor, and 75633 Bajor. So four different uh, rows in my locations table, four different uh, rows in my officers table, so every single one of the, fir the four rows in the, the first officer's table gets paired up with every single one of the rows uh, from the locations table. All right. Now, that I'm sure seems a little bit weird. Why, why would you ever want to do that? Well, we'll see in just a moment. Um, So, an interesting thing pops up if you combine cross product with selection. So let's say that I cared about uh, only those rows in this cross product where the first officer's ship was the same as the location's ship. What would I get? In other words, uh, the fourth column and the fifth column are equal. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, if I know where, uh, if I know which ship the first officer is on, and I know the location of the ship. I can get the location of the first officer. So if I, again, every single, uh, every single relational operator takes relations as input and produces relations as output. So I can take a, uh, I can apply a selection uh, to, these, um, to these rows and get back, um, a, get back one row for every single first officer. And that row is also going to include the uh, location of the first officer. <coughs> Questions? Yeah? Okay, one of these days I'm actually going to fix that typo in the slides. 
Uh, that is a typo. Uh, I, I like to refer to these as the, uh, the are you paying attention? Uh, one other thing that would bug me about this, if, uh, why, 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 are, uh, why am I referring to uh, column four and column five explicitly? Use the word join. Why would you use that? You essentially join the ship and location coupled with first officers. That's an interesting observation there. Uh, in fact, um, so one of the operators, one of the, these uh, secondary operators in, in SQL, uh, sorry, in relational algebra, is called a join. Now, it turns out that this pair of selection and projection occurs so frequently that it just got easier to come up with a specific operator to describe that pair. So a join is exactly that. It is, you compute the cross product, and then you apply a selection predicate over that cross product. Uh, so in this case, um, we can uh, find all of the first officers uh, who have a, all of the pair, we can pair up every first officer who has a lower rank than captain. Now this is a little bit of a contrived example. Um, in general, what you're going to see a lot more often is this uh, case where you're pairing up, uh, where you're pairing up uh, things on equality uh, predicates where you're testing uh, whether the first officer ship is e equivalent to the location's ship. And so this also comes in uh, uh, because this type of uh, join occurs so, so frequently, it has its own name, an equijoin. Uh, so an equijoin is basically when you're test taking two uh, relations and you're testing, uh, you're, you're pairing up every row in one relation with uh, every row in another relation uh, that matches exactly on some attribute. Okay. So there's a slight uh, simplification there. Uh, first, uh, you, you might just say, uh, you might see uh, an equijoin uh, defined by just using an attribute name. So uh, this would basically uh, pair up uh, first officers uh, with locations based on ship. And as a further simplification, you might uh, completely eliminate uh, some elements of that scheme. Uh, because ship appears in both columns and because it's equal, you only need one copy. All right, so before I go on, um, any questions on anything that's been covered so far? Yeah? What command would you see projection actually implemented in if everything is select from where? Uh, so the, the question pertains to uh, SQL, which has, uh, in which statements uh, have the form select from where. And the question is, for those familiar with SQL, uh, what, uh, where would you see projection in that? This is the source of innumerable bits of confusion. Uh, the projection operator is in the select clause of SQL. So if I say select, um, first name, last name from first officers, that is a projection. Does that address your question? It does. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? All right. 
so just to, to recap, uh, an equijoin is a join where we're testing for an equality predicate. In other words, uh, select first officer dot ship is equal to uh, location dot ship uh, from the cross product of first officer and location. Um, and you'll often see this annotated as just select, uh, as just uh, the attribute that um, appears in both relations. There's also a uh, something that you'll hear, a term that you'll hear every so often, uh, called a natural join. So a natural join is basically take all of the attributes that the two relations have in common and use that as your join condition. So in this case, uh, first, or, uh, first officer uh, natural join location is exactly the same as uh, first officer join location on ship. Okay, so let's go through a really quick list here uh, to see how much, uh, see who was paying attention. So, can selection create duplicates? Uh, yes, no, selection being filtering out uh, rows from the input. So, no? You start with a set. No. Uh, yep, so selection, it, assuming the input doesn't have duplicate values, selection will not introduce any new duplicate values. How about projection? Yes. yes. So projection, uh, by eliminating distinguishing features, selection can create duplicates. Cross product. So we didn't ask, I didn't ask this one when the operator was there. But yes. Okay. Why do you say that? Or can you give me an example? So here's this is this is actually a, a fun one. Um, let's see if we're yourself a little blackboard space to work with. Um, all right. So quick check if I write at this size, can people in back see? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, so let's say I have a relation, uh, let's call it R, just because I'm lazy. my schema? I, I hear. Okay. I'm, I'm old. I can't hear you guys all the way in back. Uh, okay. So, um, how do we, what do we get here? Um, so we take everything in here and we pair it up with everything in here. So run me through this. One, two, five. One, two, five. One, two, six. Three, four, five. Three, four, six. Okay. And no duplicates yet. One, two, five. One, two, six. Three, four, five. So assuming that this is a set. Assuming that this is a set. So I know every value in here is, every tuple in here is unique. Every tuple in here is unique. I'm basically taking a unique value from column A and a unique value from column B. And what I get back is a unique value. If I take any two of you, the pair of you is unique. So, cr 
cross product actually does not introduce duplicate values. So set cross product and bag cross product behave exactly the same. Okay, how about set difference? No, yeah, you're removing tuples. Now, you need to be explicit on set difference because set difference isn't really defined on bags, but it cannot create uh, it cannot create duplicate values. And there appears to be this should actually be a no. Um, I'll fix that before I post it. Uh, union. So union uh, can that introduce duplicate values? Yes. How about a join? So here's, here's something that I want you to, uh, here's one of these tools that I want you to put into your toolbox. This is going to come up all, uh, all throughout the year. What is a join? Yep, it's a selection applied to a cross product. So that's two individual steps. Will the cross product introduce any duplicate values? No. Will the selection introduce any duplicate values? No. So by taking this one big operator, which has complex semantics, and breaking it down into individual steps, you can analyze the individual steps and if you can prove to yourself that none of those steps actually does something uh, that you don't want them to do, then the overall thing, the overall process, doesn't do it either. In this case, cross product doesn't introduce duplicate values. Selection doesn't introduce duplicate values. So a selection plus a, a, uh, applied to a, a, a cross product can't produce duplicate values either. Okay, um, questions up to this point. Okay, so what I'm going to ask you guys to do right now, um, turn to your left and or right, uh, say hello, and um, with the person to your left and or right, um, come up with a relational algebra expression that uh, will find uh, the last names of all captains that are on a ship located at Bajor. And I, uh, if you come up with one, um, you get, let's give you about five minutes uh, to do this. Uh, if you come up with one, try and come up with a, an entirely different one. Is anyone coming close to a solution? Yeah. Uh, so what I would like you to do is come up with a relational algebra expression that uh, produces a relation that contains the last names of every single captain, in other words, um, every single uh, uh, every single captain, uh, that is on a ship, in other words, that, uh, is, uh, that has a ship that corresponds to a location uh, that is Bajor. Yeah? Uh, sorry, I'll stop. Uh, so uh, you said projection? So projection of last name. Projection of last name. 
project last name from the selection. Uh, where the selection? Where field six equals main door. Uh, field six. Okay, so. <coughs> Seems reasonable. Uh, let's do a quick sanity check. So we're going to join these uh, these two relations. Uh, then we're going to get James Kirk four zero one seven zero one a Earth. Uh, and yeah. Why is the join that motion? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Again, good uh, good job raising your hand. Okay, so sanity check. Uh, James Kirk, 1701A, Earth. That won't get past here. Seems reasonable. Down with the card. Risa, nope. Uh, Benjamin Cisco, DS9, yep, that's in Bayshore. So that will pass through here, and I'll get the last name. All right, so you go through that whole thing. Um, seems like you're going to get the result that you're expecting, which uh, in this case, would be uh, Cisco and Kira. All right. Uh, yeah. Please. I, I did uh, the selection before. I did the selection of uh, location. Uh, run me through the full. Uh, so I did a projection of last name, and we joined of uh, captain. Like that? Oh, it's interesting. You can take that location right down there. Let's see if that works. Well, what if we, uh, okay, we pick out uh, the two ships. Uh, that are at Bejor, or the two um, rows in, in locations that correspond to Bejor. Um, and then we do a cross product. Well, where are we going to get there? So, James Kirk 40 joined with this blob. What's that going to produce? Is there it's actually, uh, so we've got location, the selection of locations as ship. Uh, so what's going to be in this selection? So we got Bajor, but uh, what, what are the rows here? James Kirk 75633 Major, James Kirk DS9 Major, and none of the ships here correspond to the ship James Kirk is on. No output. Nothing passes the selection predicate. Um, now that's kind of interesting. That is very interesting because, as you'll see later on in the term, this means you're doing a lot less work here. The other interesting thing about this is that these two are computing exactly the same thing. 
And that's something that we're going to be able to use to our advantage if we can understand why these two are computing exactly the same thing. And take advantage of that, that's going to allow us to make our query processing way, 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 way faster. Um, uh, yeah. So, it's really good. Um, there's one other uh, phrasing of this that you might see, and I just want to expose you guys to it, although I probably won't use it too much uh, myself, um, which is you can sometimes, you're sometimes going to see uh, relational algebra expressions broken down into steps. Uh, so I can define a temporary table that is equal to uh, the selection of locations on Bezier, uh, define another temporary table. Uh, so you can basically break this, this process down step by step um, and record it that way. Um, I'm not going to use this personally, but uh, just so you're aware, that kind of notation does exist. But the big thing, these are all trying to do exactly the same thing. And what we're going to look at in the next couple of weeks is how we can figure that out, how we can figure out that all of those, that two different queries are the same, or more generally, uh, how we can take one query and find another query that's the same, but better. All right, we are running a little bit um, yeah, let's just, eh, one more thing. Okay, um, right, division. Um, so there are some uh, sadistic database teachers who will uh, use this as a way to torture students. Um, I will not, but because uh, th this is something that you may be expected to know when you go out into uh, the, the real world. Division is one of these really, really weird relational operators that has uh, semantics that honestly the, the rarity of, of where this is useful, uh, the, the number of cases where division is actually useful does not warrant knowing it. But again, uh, I just want to make sure that, this is, that you've at least been exposed to the fact that this exists. Division, loosely put, is uh, very similar to uh, division in arithmetic um, with rounding. In other words, we're going to take a relation, uh, and this relation is going to tell us everything that's possible. Uh, for example, every planet that exists. And what the division operator is going to allow us to do is take one relation and basically find every row, uh, every entity in that relation that has visited all of those planets, as an example. So if I have uh, name and planet, and I have a, another relation with uh, planet, I'm basically going to find every single name that, car that, has, uh, that is paired up with every single planet. Kind of the inverse of cross product. So if I take uh, the cross product of uh, P, in this case the planet, and the output of the division, I'm going to get back most of V. Uh, this is really hard to explain in uh, practice, so what I'm going to uh, do is explain it through uh, an example. So let's say I've got um, my officers up there, um, Kirk, Spock, uh, McCoy, and Scotty. Uh, and a list of planets that they have visited. I also have a planets table. So if I divide um, 
So uh, first example, uh, P1 is just Earth. So V divided by P1 is going to be all four of the officers, Kirk, uh, Spock, McCoy, and Scotty, uh, because all of them have visited Earth. Second example, um, P2, Earth and Vulcan. Now I'm going to get rid of Scotty. So Kirk, Spock, and McCoy have all visited Earth and Vulcan. So there is a row, Kirk, Earth, Kirk, uh, Vulcan, a row, Spock, Earth, Spock, Vulcan, and a row, McCoy, Earth, McCoy, Vulcan. So in other words, if I multiply uh, if I uh, do a cross product between P2 and that, I'm going to get many of the rows in that. There's a remainder that uh, the rows that don't quite appear in the cross product, but that's the the idea. And finally, the only officer there who's visited all three planets is Spock. Yeah. Uh, in Yes, it should. Thank you. Uh, you're awake. Good. So division is not really an essential operation. It is sometimes a useful shorthand. Um, join, this kind of thing also applies to joins. Joins are a use useful shorthand. But joins appear a lot more frequently than division. Um, I'm I'm not going to call you on, on not knowing division, uh, but just be aware that it exists. Have a general sense of what it's for, and um, try it out just in, in your spare time if you want to try out uh, how to implement division in terms of regular relational operators. Do it. See everyone on Tuesday.